Yeah, I do talk a lot of shit to a lot of different strategies. <coughs> you know? But you might be wondering, what is a good strategy? More specifically, what is a good 1v1 aggro strat? Well, to answer this question, I'm gonna get a bit more specific. There are currently 20 different maps in the 1v1 pool right now. Now, we're not gonna be counting any maps over 150 studs in length due to them having an extremely different play style than the shorter maps. And this is also due to long maps not having much skill to it. Besides, these maps are banned from official TBC tourneys. I'm also gonna be banning Grasslands from this because it has a very bad track length and shape and just in general, most normal loadouts become unplayable on Grasslands. This leaves us with seven competitive maps for us to work with. Ideally, our loadout should be able to beat most loadouts on every one of these maps. Now, some current popular aggro strats include the famous Farm Shoddy Marksman DJ Commander, utilizing Commander and DJ buffing Marksman to its full potential, and Farm Shoddy Marks Commander Flame being one of the best infant mid-game rushing loadouts to exist. It allows you to send insane amounts of zombies mid-game. However, there is one completely underrated tower that beats both these loadouts. Anarchist. Now, Yes, there are some other anarchist strats out there, maybe getting you quick wins. However, if your opponent is somewhat skilled, they'll probably be easily able to counter those anarchist strats. So, why is anarchist so good? Believe it or not, it's because of one of its abilities being completely broken. The smoke. The smoke allows you to decrease any tower's range by roughly 50% for 12 seconds. When an anarchist is immediately upgraded to level 30, it gets a 10 second global cooldown before you can place a smoke. Now, you already see the problem here. Anarchist ability lasts for 12 seconds, but if you sell and replace it, the cooldown is 10 seconds. This means you can infinitely keep any tower under smokes for an infant duration as long as you have the money to use a smokes and micro anarchist. But you might be wondering, even if I can infinitely smoke a tower, why would it matter? Won't it still do damage when zombies are in range? Well, yes, but no. You see, Anarchist does not take away a set amount of range, more so it takes away a percentage, 50% to be exact. Because of this, towers with more range get more range taken away. This includes towers like Golden Commando, Railgun, Marksman, and even Golden Scout. You can somewhat to completely neutralize these towers late game with proper smoke microing. This, combined with an insane anarch rushing strat early game, makes this easily the best aggressive loadout. Now, as noted, for this strategy to be most effective, you must play on maps between 125 to 150 in length. It is not the end of the world if a map longer is picked, just keep in mind the effect on this strategy drops as the map length gets longer. Before you even load into the game, you need to ask three questions. Does your opponent have Enforcer? Does your opponent have Cryo? Or does he have neither? This early game strategy is extremely simple and easy. I would recommend you memorize it. Place a level 2 farm, then a shotgunner on the first corner. Then place a level 1 farm, then upgrade the first farm to level 3. Upgrade the second farm to level 2. Upgrade the first farm to level 4. Place a shotgunner on the third corner right after you get a level 4 farm. Then you upgrade your other farm to level 4 and then place a level 1 marks. Keep in mind your second farm needs to be upgraded to level 4 by wave 7 for the strategy to be most effective. Also, on farm fields, you actually cannot get a level 2 farm wave 4. So you want to skip the step and then upgrade it after you place your second shotgunner. On farm fields, make sure you place the second shotgunner on the second corner, not the third. And with that, you got your whole early game covered, waves 1 through 8. Boss 1 rushes. Now, for wave 9, you can send up to 3 boss 1s. To counter a boss 1 rush on wave 9, simply get 2 level 3 marksmen. If they try and send a large number of boss 1s or an infinite, you just need to stay calm, get a 3rd marksman to level 3, and if you feel like it, you can get a level 2 commander. This should counter any infinite boss 1 rush. If you still don't feel safe, you are allowed to get a 4th level 3 marksman. 
For boss one rushing on wave 11, I would only do this if they're using Aviator, Commando, or Enforcer to counter their wave nine boss one rush. If so, you can send two wave 11, so it's stacked with the naturals. If they did not use these towers to counter the wave nine boss one rush, then don't send and keep on farming. On wave 13, all you want to do is place a third tracker to make sure the mysteries get popped. After that, you can keep on farming. Now, it's wave 14. If you remember my question, there are two different ways you can go about this. If the answer is yes, and they do have Enforcer or Cryo, you can use early game strategy A. Now, if they don't have Enforcer or Cryo, you can actually skip ahead to early game strategy B. This will be most effective against anybody without Enforcer or Cryo. So, they have Enforcer or Cryo. Well, in general, wave 14 rush against Enforcer is a no-go. If you feel like they're massively underdefending, you're free to send anywhere from 2 to even 6 boss ones. But if not, just mind your own business and keep farming. If they decide to send, make sure you have 3 level 1 shotgunners and 3 level 3 marksmen. In general, you should be fine until wave 17. Once wave 17 comes, get a level 2 commander and you can keep farming. Try and get 12 to 15 level 4 farms by wave 18 and a max shotgunner. Now it's mid game. This is where you usually send 6 to 12 boss twos. Keep in mind, if he sends over 3 boss twos back, you will need to get a max marksman by wave 20, so don't send as many as you usually would. Once you sent your bosses and got one max marksman, try and farm more. As long as he does not send over 12 at you, you should be fine. And if he does send over 12, you might want to stop farming and simply get more max marksmen and level 3 commanders. Because once wave 22 starts, you want to send as many boss twos as you can afford. However, make sure you can afford a second level 5 marksman and a second level 3 commander by the next wave. Once wave 23 starts, send as many hidden bosses back until the double hidden boss stack arrives on wave 24. If he sends back, just simply get another level 5 marksman, wave 24, and another level 3 commander. You should be fine, and after that, just keep farming. Anarchist Micro. While sending your hidden boss rush on waves 23 to 24, make sure you micro the smoke on Anarchist so the most important DPS towers won't be able to do their full potential DPS. The towers you're mostly going to be looking for are maxed out Mercenary, Soldier, Commando, Golden Scout, or plasmas. Keep in mind, smoking enforcer will do nothing as it doesn't affect it. To micro properly, upgrade an anarchist to level 3, place its smoke down, and immediately sell it. Replace it and upgrade it back to level 3. If done right, the global cooldown for the smoke should run out before the smoke goes away. Simply repeat this and they should die. Uh, you're not supposed to get here. If you do, you're kinda fucked. However, if they don't have DJ, they might just be more fucked than you. So your best bet would be to farm, save up cash for probably a boss 3 rush, and try kill him again with a boss 3 rush. Waves 31 or 32 to 33. I would recommend you just pick one and stick with it. You can also use Anarchist Micro for this. This will increase your chances of killing them. But if they do get past that, you're probably dead. So, they have no easy counters to Anarchist and Mega Android? Well, check their set again. Make sure they don't have any of those towers placed down. Also, make sure they are farming and they're not easily over defending. If they are over defending, you might just want to go with strat A. But if you're sure all these things are correct, then this might be the play for you. On wave 14, make sure you have 3 level 3 marksmen and 3 level 1 shotgunners. This should counter anything they send and all naturals. Now, send them 4 to 6 boss ones on their side. Make sure you send them right away as the wave starts. It is important for you to make sure you have 4,800 at minimum cash next wave. Ideally, you should have more. Now, your farms probably won't provide you all of this, so just make sure you have a bit left over from wave 14. Now, once wave 15 starts, place an anarchist and immediately upgrade to level 4 within 1 second. If done right, this should send a mega android to the other person's side. This is extremely hard to counter and will force them to sell all their farms. 
make sure you also use its smoke ability once the troops start targeting the mega android if you use it too soon the smoke ability might not be any use if all of this was done correctly this will force massive farm selling and eco loss from your opponent while minimum eco loss on your end after this, simply farm, send boss twos and hidden bosses like the strategy above. You practically win the game due to having more money than them and being able to do more stuff than them. That's the end of the video. Uh, please subscribe, but I don't really care. Fuck you.